In this full edit today, I'm going to show you a targeted approach to masking that I don't often see used. With certain images like this one, global adjustments aren't suitable for fixing very bright areas on the subject. If you drop the exposure or highlights using global adjustments, the entire image is affected, which we don't want. You might think, let's just use a subject mask and drop the highlights but that will affect the entire subject. Instead, I want to preserve the bright parts in specific areas. So let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you how to make very specific adjustments to very specific areas, along with a variety of other masking techniques. I've got the image open up here in Lightroom and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize my photo. So what that does, it resets or it makes sure all the sliders are set to zero. It also sets my profile to Adobe Standard. I've taken sharpening off for now and the color noise reduction is on 25 and lens corrections on remove chromatic aberration. So the first thing I always do now in my editing is I go use DxO Pure or 4. I'm going to process this instantly with that software and the image isn't very noisy but I'm going to tighten up the details and get rid of the noise. Now I'm just going to set this to luminance of 25, leave the force details at zero, correct lens softness and output that to a Lightroom. So that's going to process the file, it's going to denoise the file and it's going to sharpen the details and it does a very nice job. Okay, so now we have the new DNG file without all the noise and slightly sharper detail. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just want to drop the overall exposure and as I mentioned in the intro of the video, this very bright area of the leopard is a bit tricky to edit. I don't want to drop the highlights because it's going to affect the entire image. I don't want to drop the whites because that will affect the entire image. So what I'm going to do now, and I try this a lot, is instead of affecting the image globally using these sliders, use Lightroom masks. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to target specific areas on the image instead of adjusting the entire image. So this very bright section on the leopard here is caused by a spotlight. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to select a radial gradient. I'm going to drop it over quite a big area of the image just to cover that very bright section there. So this is nothing new. We all know how to do this. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to intersect this with a subject mask. So that takes away everything that's not part of the subject. Now what I could do is I can drop the highlights here. But as you can see, it's, a, it's affecting the highlights in the other areas of the leopard. I don't want that. I want that to be very specific to this very bright area here. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to intersect this with a luminance range. Now I'm going to select the luminance range on this very bright portion of the leopard. Let's just zoom in a little bit more so you can see what's happening here. I want to target this very bright section. Let's just show luminance map. And that's going to show everything that's now been selected. So with this luminance range, I'm just going to tweak what it's selecting. Adjusting this slide at the bottom is getting rid of a lot of that detail. And now I'm only really targeting the very, very bright areas on that area there of that leopard. Let's turn that off. Now, if I go and drop these highlights, you can see it's only really affecting this specific area and it's not adjusting highlights in other parts of the leopard here. So I'm going to drop that and probably drop the whites a little bit. My main goal with this first part of the edit is to balance the exposure on the leopard. You can see the face is also a bit too dark. And this area here, I guess, is also a little bit bright. So through use of very targeted masking, I'm going to affect the leopard and you know, create a more balanced exposure. I'm going to add a radial gradient here. I'm not going to worry that it's going over the, into the sky. I'm going to intersect this with select subject and I'm going to raise the exposure there just to bring more exposure onto the face. And I think what it's doing, it's actually brightening the exposure on the mouth there. So I'm going to subtract a brush There we go, that's looking much better. Make sure it's not brightening any of this area here. And that's the mask on and off. So you can see it's balancing that exposure a lot better. I think I might add another radial gradient just to this area here and maybe just drop the exposure slightly and actually subtract select sky just to get rid of that sky mask there. I could also intersect that with subject. 
Again, I'm going to now focus on this ear here. This ear is very bright. This one is very dark compared. So I'm going to select a radial gradient, drop another one over there, intersect with select subject, brighten that exposure. Okay, so now I want to affect this area on the leopard on the back. It's very bright as well. So let's add another radial gradient, quite a broad one there. Might make it a bit longer and just drop the angle and this size here, just to cover that very bright area. Intersect again with select subject and I might then drop the exposure and the whites a little bit there. I don't want the this area to be super bright because I want the attention to be mainly on the face and you're always drawn towards bright areas. So I think this ear needs a bit more exposure, a little bit there. And I think what I might do is I might use another radial gradient just on this very small area of the mouth. Just drop the highlights, I think. A bit of the whites there. So you can see, just to start off with, I've now balanced the exposure on this leopard a lot better. I guess this area on the face is maybe a bit too bright, so I'm just going to drop that. Turn the masking all off and on. So as you can see, through those targeted adjustments, I've now balanced the exposure on the leopard. So now this is something I really recommend you do before you start looking at global adjustments. Fix errors like that. You want to adjust the exposure and make sure your subject is evenly exposed, especially in situations like this. It can be quite difficult to fix exposure issues like that using global adjustments. So now that's the start of the image. Let's go to global adjustments. I think the first thing I'm going to do here is crop, just to improve the composition a bit. It's looking good. I'm going to see I've got some clipped blacks here. I'm just going to raise the blacks a little bit and drop the exposure. I'm going to look at the white balance. I'm liking the blue in the background. I might add a slight bit of magenta, although that's going to shift the sky to a more purple color. So I think I'm going to affect this leopard independently using a subject mask or maybe point color, actually. Let's go to point color. Let's adjust the color of the leopard. Let's take this yellow color here. I'm going to visualize range. I want to see what it's affecting. I'm going to increase the range. I want to make sure I'm selecting all of that color on that leopard. And also with this luminance range, I want to just increase the luminance range to select the very bright parts of that leopard. And also the darker yellows, some of the more desaturated yellows and all of the saturated yellows. I think that's looking pretty good as far as selecting the colors go. So now I'm going to shift the hue more towards a more red color. And I might increase the luminance slightly. around about there and now I'm going to do the sky I want to select this blue in the sky increase the range I don't think there's any blues on the leopard at all so the range is going to be quite high there let's select all of this luminance and saturation in the higher areas I think that's looking pretty nice now because I've increased the luminance on the leopard I'm going to decrease the luminance on the sky that's just going to help that subject pop even more I might desaturate this blue very slightly and just play with a the hue there. Maybe something around about there. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on some contrast. I might just increase some of the lights a little bit using the tone curve, decrease some of these darker areas. Now that's going to bring in quite a bit of saturation to the image, which I don't want. So I'm going to use this refined saturation and just drop that. So that's going to take the saturation back to where it was before we added that bit of contrast there. I'll just leave a little bit in there. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to use a vignette without the subject. So what that's going to do is it's going to create a vignette and it's going to exclude the subject. Now on my Lightroom Tools preset pack here, which by the way you can get for free in the link in the description below, I'm going to use this vignette excluding the subject. That's going to create a mask. You can see on the top here, it's created that mask. Let's show you what it's doing. So it's created the vignette, but it's excluding the subject. I don't want to darken parts of that subject. I just want to darken the areas around the subject. 
something around about there. Minus 0.8 on the exposure there. Okay, one thing I want to do now, I like the I like the blacks on the leopard and on this foreground branch. I want to soften the blacks in the sky here. You can see this is very distracting. I don't I don't necessarily want to get rid of it, but what I want to do is I want to sort of fade the blacks there. So using my black fade one mask here, I like the effect it's having on the background. I don't like the effect it's having on the leopard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this black fade one. I'm going to then intersect that with a select sky. So what that's going to do, it's going to select the sky around the leopard there. I might just subtract select subject just to make sure all those edges are taken away. Now you can see it's not selecting these parts of the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a brush and literally just paint over that area to include that black fade effect onto that area on the background. Let's have a look without that off. And there you go, that's the effect there. It's a nice subtle effect. It's getting rid of the darkest areas in the background there. I feel like it might be a bit strong, so I'm just going to click this mask and just drop the amount very slightly. Around about there. One thing I like to do is I like to add blues to my shadows. So I've got a shadows blue tint mask here. I'm going to click that. It's very strong to start off with, but I'm going to just drop this amount. Maybe that's affecting the background a bit too strong. I like what it's doing on the leopard, especially just in the shadow area. It's a very subtle effect, but I like just increasing the color contrast on the subject. So I'm just going to intersect this with select subject, just so that effect sits on this subject here. Again, I'm going to go to point color, just want to change this color of the leopard a bit more towards red again. And I might just desaturate it very slightly around about there. And to help the subject stand out a little bit more, I've got a background darken mask here. I'm going to click that. The effect is too strong to start off with, but I'm just going to decrease that amount of that background darkening there. I think then I'm going to just work on the color a little bit just to see what this vibrance and saturation does to the image it's a bit much there i think the color is fairly good let's adjust these black slightly i'm just going to bring in some more highlights just to drop the exposure just increase the contrast a little bit more and then i think through the point color i'm just going to drop this orange color saturation again it's a bit strong Last thing I'm going to do is add some sharpening. Just zoom in here. Sharpening, I've got some presets here. Probably just low to start off with. And I'm pretty happy with that. And this is the before, and this is the after. Lightroom is full of incredible tools, but there are hidden tricks waiting to be discovered. Unlock even more editing power now with this video here, where I share seven Lightroom tricks most photographers don't know.